The problems of humankind, not that we shall despise each other. That according to Japan, India will be the superpower of the world. We will be a superpower, will be far superior to the Americans. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam. Ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Amma abad. A'udhu billahi min shaitani rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa min ahasunu kawla min man doi lillahi. Wa amil salihun. قال إن المسلم رب شهلي صدري ويسر لي أمري وهل الأودة من لسان يفقه كولي أول كمال في الإسلام كريتينز السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala be on all of you. If you have any questions on Islam and compared religion, you're most welcome to ask. I'm not an expert on the Quran. You are, but I've read the English translation. So I just want to ask you about something I read there. In one place where uh, uh, the Prophet uh, Muhammad salam, he is told, if you are in doubt about the things I am showing you, then go and ask the ones who have been reading the books before you, which I presume are the Jews and the Christians. So I was thinking from these verses in the Quran that... Uh, if the Torah and the Injil and the Zabur are, are the word of Allah and that Muhammad is, is supposed to ask the Jews and the Christians if he's in doubt about what's being revealed to him, then how, can, how is it that the Bible is possible to be corrupted? Okay, very good question, brother. And brother David asked a very good question. You told in your question, Allah told Prophet Muhammad, if you don't know, go and see in the books of the Jews. Again, misunderstanding. Now I realize that really you have just read the Quran, not an expert, based on the third question. What Allah is telling? Allah is telling Prophet Muhammad, you ask peace be upon him. You ask the Jews and Christians. If you don't believe, look at your scripture. It is not telling to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Allah is telling Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You tell the Jews and the Christians, if you don't believe in this law, look in your scripture. Why? Because this is the last testament. And last testament contains part of the old and the new testament. Because this is the final word of God, it contains part of the Torah and the Injil. So Prophet Muhammad has been asked by Almighty God to tell the Jews and Christians, if you don't agree in this, that's what I'm telling you. If you don't agree not to eat the Pope, look in your Bible. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8. In the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 65, verse number 2 to 5. I mean, I'm quoting. It's not mentioned you have to quote like that. It's mentioned that you have to tell them, look, I'm helping you. Because if you go and find, you may take one hour, may take two hours. If I give reference, two minutes. If you know how to open the Bible and go through it, if I tell you book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8. If you don't know Deuteronomy, is the fifth book. You look in the index under D. It will tell you page number, open that. After you open that, chapter number 14, easy. Every page is numbered. Every chapter is numbered. Verse number 8, easy. If I tell you where it's not, then you have to go under concordance. If you know how to do concordance, look under P, look under Poke. You may find, you may not find, depending how big the concordance is. So, same way, Prophet Muhammad, I am learning from that. I am getting guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the way Prophet Muhammad convinced the Jews and Christians, I am trying to convince you the same way. I am trying to be a student of the Prophet, trying to follow his guidance. Fine? So, the same way Prophet told, for example, same way Jesus Christ be upon him did. Same thing that all those who have not done any evil is the first one who will cast the stone on this woman. Is it not mentioned? Similarly, it said, is it not mentioned in your law and the scripture? Jesus Christ be upon said, same thing Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that you open your book and see what is the law. So many things that Prophet Muhammad told with the Jews and Christians disagreed at that time. He said, this is what is mentioned in your scripture. That means he was a messenger of God, not that he read the Torah. Not that he read the Injil. He didn't know Hebrew. He didn't know. And there was no Arabic version of the Bible that time. Arabic version came later on. Fine. So if Prophet Muhammad couldn't have read that. He was illiterate. Fine. So because he was told by Almighty God, being a messenger of God, he gets a direct revelation. He was told by Almighty God. He tells them, look. And when they look at it, they get convinced. So the way Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Muhammad convinced the Jews and Christians of that time, I'm trying in a smaller way, my level best. To try and convince you that brother, if you think this is wrong, 
forget the Quran. You don't believe in the Quran, keep it aside. I am saying if you believe the Bible is the word of God, should you follow the Bible or not? Do you agree the Bible is the word of God, yes or no? Yes. The Bible says don't have pork. Do you have pork? Is the question of yes or no? Or you say Bible doesn't say. Please let me respond. Then. Sure, you must have. Aren't there some things in the life of uh, Muhammad which uh, he says they were at one time uh, halal for you and I have made them haram or they have, were at one time haram and I have made them halal? Doesn't it sometimes happen like that? So we, we believe that for the people of it, Israel, for the Jewish people, when, when Allah gave the law to uh, Musa, alayhi salam, we believe that for them the pork was haram. And this is why it is in the uh, Torah. Brother, in any organization, when any command is given to you, you have to find out who is giving the command. Any command given by high authority can be overruled. Suppose a teacher gives a command in a school and the principal overrules that, she has a right. But a teacher has no right to overrule the command of a principal. So in every religion, the person giving the high authority can overrule, not a low authority. If you read the Quran, Quran mentions that what has been prohibited for the Jews in the Quran, the fat of the ox, it was been haram for them, but for you, who says that? Highest authority, Almighty God. Now in the Bible, I know what you're referring to. Saint Peter, he sees a dream. He sees it, correct? Saint Peter. That's right. He See the dream and he sees that the pork is good and eating of pork is there. It's a dream. One thing, whether it be any apostle, whether it be St. Paul also, the self-appointed apostle of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, they are not superior to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. If Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 to 20, that think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I have come not to destroy but to fulfill. Until the heaven and the earth pass away, not one jot or tittle shall pass away from the law until all be fulfilled. And whosoever shall break one of the least commandments, least jot or tittle, whosoever shall break one of the least commandments and teach men to do so shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall keep the commandments and teach the same shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, in no way shall you enter the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I have come not to destroy the law of the prophets. I have come to fulfill. Not one jot or tittle shall pass away until the complete law is fulfilled. If any of you break one law, even a minutest, shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. And this is present in the Red Letter Bible. If you know what is the Red Letter Bible, are you aware of Red Letter Bible? MashaAllah, you, Alhamdulillah, very good. May God bless you. Red Letter Bible is a Bible, those people who don't know, it is a red letter means those words which Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself has said. Because everything of the Bible is not the word of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. In Quran, everything is the word of Allah, of God. 100%, not one jot or tittle, is not the word of Almighty God. Now, in the Bible, those which are the word of God, if you put in a newspaper, it will be less than one page. Just two long columns of a small percentage. It's present in the New Testament. Old Testament is nil. In the New Testament also, mainly in the Gospels. And here are the little bit in Acts. Very few. So if you analyze, it is a very small percentage of the complete Bible. And this portion is that word of Jesus Christ will be upon him. No black letter can overrule a red letter. Because red letter is the word of Jesus Christ. Black letter is maybe somebody else. Maybe apostle, maybe historian, maybe X, Y, Z, maybe narration. No black letter can overrule a red letter. Why? Red letter is Jesus Christ. Peace be upon him. Unless you consider Paul, Peter, Thomas, higher than Jesus Christ, no. So in Islam also, we have Almighty God. We have a Prophet Muhammad We have our Sahaba as companions. How you have apostles, we have companions. You have the followers of Jesus Christ, we have companions of Prophet Muhammad But no companion. If you show me the companion has spoken against Prophet Muhammad, throw away that word. Prophet Muhammad number one in the human beings. After Allah, Prophet Muhammad number one. Then comes the Sahaba. So there is a gradation. No word of the Sahaba can overrule the word of the Prophet. Never. In every religion, there is hierarchy. The word of God cannot be overruled by the word of the messenger. The word of the companions of the messengers can never overrule the word of the prophet. So what you are quoting me 
is lower grade. Right or wrong, we'll discuss later on. <laughs> what you're saying is right or wrong is different. But even if I agree it is right, what you're saying, it is a black letter. Right? So no black letter can overrule red letter if you know, if you are a scholar of Bible, you'll know. If you're not a scholar of Bible, and if somebody has told you, so that was finishing a third part of the question. Now the main question is remaining of your earlier question. Fine? No, no, I'll give you all the time. I'll just finish the, I will finish my answer and then I'll get back. No problem. Even if the others don't get a chance, we'll give it. You're a guest, brother. You're a guest and we love to speak with you. But let me finish your earlier question. Fikriya, Dr. Zakir ke saath. Sabse zyada faayde man tijara hai. Kya aap jannna chahenge ki kis tijarat mein aap sabse zyada munafa hasil kar sakte hai? Ye raaz, surah al-Bakra, surah number 2, ayat number 261 bata diya gaya hai. جو لوگ اپنا مال اللہ کی راہ میں خرچ کرتے ہیں ان کی مثال اس دانے جیسی ہے جس میں سے سات بالیاں نکلیں اور ہر بالی میں سو دانے ہوں اور اللہ جس کو چاہتا ہے بڑھا کر دیتا ہے اگر آپ اللہ کی راہ میں خرچ کرتے ہیں تو آپ کو سات سو گناہ زیادہ ملے گا تجارت کی زبان میں آپ پائیں گے ستر ہزار فیصد گناہ کا کیا آپ کسی ایسی تجارت کے بارے میں جانتے ہیں جس میں آپ کو اتنا منافع ملے آج ہی آپ اللہ کی راہ میں اپنا مال لگائیے اور کتنی ہی بستیاں ہیں کہ ہم نے تباہ کر ڈالی جن پر ہمارا عذاب یا تو رات میں آتا تھا جبکہ وہ سوتے تھے یا دن کو جب وہ قیلولہ یعنی دوپہر کو آرام کرتے تھے وہ کون سے اسباب تھے ان کی وجہ سے اللہ تعالیٰ نے مختلف قوموں کو ہلاک کیا وہ کون کون سے طریقے تھے جن کے سریعے اللہ تعالیٰ نے مختلف قوموں کو ہلاک کیا ہلاک شدہ قوموں کے عوام کا اور ان کے حکمرانوں کا کیا جرم تھا ان سوالات کا جواب حاصل کرنے کی ذلیے پیس ٹی وی اردو پر دیکھئے میرا پروگرام چند ہلاک شدہ قومیں اور جن لوگوں نے ہماری آیتوں کو جھٹلایا ان کو ہم بتدریج اس طرح پکڑیں گے کہ ان کو معلوم ہی نہیں ہوگا جانئے کس طرح اللہ کے عذاب کا شکار ہوئے وہ لوگ جو بہ رہے تھے اپنی سرکشی کی راو میں چند ہلاکت یافتہ آمیں اگلا پروگرام پیس ٹی وی اردو پر After the third question you pose that is it not possible that why are comparing Quran the Bible is right and Quran is wrong you didn't use the word Quran wrong you are very humble and appreciate that I know you didn't say that but you said that the Bible is right in a comparing with the Quran. Comparing the Quran means you're comparing a wrong thing with the right thing. You have to follow the right thing. I agree with you. But is the Bible right is the question. I've given a separate talk. Is the Quran God's word? And any person who's unbiased, who even doesn't know much about the Quran, but when I've given the talk along with the question and session for approximately four hours, any unbiased person will see the talk. I've proved it logically with reason, logic, and science that Quran is the word of God. I've given the talk. Is the Bible God's word? And use the same logic here. There are so many contradictions in the Bible. I don't want to quote them. According to an article, more than 50,000 errors. I don't want to go into that. I've read the book of Bible. Which you have read, I don't know. All Muslims' book, I don't agree to be correct. Yes, if it's the Quran, I agree with it. I stand by it. If you name the book, may agree with, may not agree. May agree with part of it, may not agree with part of it. So first, highest authority. Number one, Quran. Even if in my book, this is more superior than my book also. 
Number one Quran. Then comes the sayings of the Prophet, the Sahih one. Coming back to your question. So when we use simple logic, when we use facts, we find there are so many scientific errors in the Bible. I'll just give you a few samples. Time doesn't permit us to go into the great detail. For example, the Bible says in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number four, verse number eight, that the world is flat. It's mentioned in the book of Genesis, chapter number one, verse number 16 to 19. It speaks about the creation of the universe, that there was no light. God said there was light first day, second day, third day. Then it comes and it says on the fourth day. On the fourth day, God Almighty, he created the sun and the stars. And the light was created on the first day. It's illogical. The source of light came later on and the light came earlier. If I say that I made a bulb and I switch on the bulb and then there was light, then I said the light came on the first day in the first hour and the bulb was switched on on the fourth hour. People will think, I don't know science well. Furthermore, it is mentioned the creation of the earth on the third day and the vegetation. And the sun was created on the fourth day. Now, earth is a part of sun in science. Fine. To say that the part was created first and the sun came later on is unscientific. Furthermore, if you read in the book of Genesis, chapter number one, verse number 16 and 19, it says that God Almighty created two great lights. The bigger light, the sun to rule the day, and the smaller light, the moon to rule the night. And the word out there used in the original text indicates that it has light of its own. The Quran says, sorry, Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 61, that the light of the sun is its own light and the light of the moon is reflected light. So if a scientist reads the Quran and the Bible, he will agree with the Quran but not the Bible. The light of the moon is not its own light. Previously, a few hundred years back, we thought the light of the moon was its own light. Today we know that the light of the moon is not its own light, it's a reflected light. So like that we can go on and on and on and on and on. There are hundreds of scientific errors. In the limited time I had in the debate and now I have less time. I pointed out 38 scientific errors to Dr. William Campbell, who was the best that Christianity could produce in science and Bible. Fine. He's a medical doctor. Got a PhD. I'm telling you, he's very famous. Or rather was famous. And everyone, many of the Americans, if they want to trap a Muslim, they use this book. See, Quran has got scientific errors. Bible has got no scientific errors. And the person who's not well versed in the field may get impressed or may not be able to answer. So I had to go all the way from here to Chicago, to America, to USA, and I had a dialogue there, Alhamdulillah, God's help was there, it was very successful. And you can have that cassette, inshallah, and I'll give you a copy of this debate, as well as similarity with some Christianity. So therefore I say that regarding Bible, can't it be possible? Bible is true, it can be possible. But not is. So you analyze. When we analyze that the Bible contains many mathematical errors, if you add up, there are mistakes. Mathematical errors means the same verse is repeated twice and the figures are different. Contradictions, 2,000 bars, 3,000 bars. Several, so many, not one. Many can be reconciled, I know that. If the 10,000 pointed out on the internet, maybe 50%, 80% can be reconciliated. But many hundreds cannot be. I've gone through them. Hundreds with all your logic, with all your sense, I have traveled the breadth and length, mashallah, and I've gone to various countries, spoken with scholars. I'm not a scholar, I'm a student. And no one could reconcile these contradictions, these scientific errors, these historical mistakes. So when we use whatever knowledge our God has given us and put it to test, we fail to agree that Bible is the word of God. But when you put to Quran, we agree. For that, we'll have to see my cassette, inshallah. Now we come to our next question, brother. Most welcome. Just a couple of clarifications. I, I'm not trying to debate you. You're most welcome, no uh, I, I'm sure I am because you're very knowledgeable. But I'm not trying to debate you. I'm just trying to learn as well as we are all trying to learn about Allah. So if I can learn something from you or you can learn something from me, wonderful. Uh, I just want to point out, I personally do not eat pork because out of respect. Uh, but I think also there is a reason in the red letter of the Bible why Christians feel it is okay to do so. Not simply because of the black letter, but uh, Isa alayhi salam has also said that there is nothing that comes into a person through their mouth that can defile them. But it is the sinful tendencies that come out of our own heart 
the evil that is in our heart that defiles a person. And it's because of that saying of uh, Hazrat Isa that uh, the Christian teaching is that he has declared foods clean, that it's not a food that you consume that, that defiles a person. So uh, whether you agree with that or not, that is at least something in the red letter that explains why Christians do feel that in the time of Moses, Allah had prohibited pork, but then this was something that Hazrat Isa had made halal for his followers. I'll reply to that. I do agree with you, brother. You're not coming to debate me, neither do I want to debate you. We are learning. If you tell me something which what I've said is wrong or with my understanding, I'm willing to change. See a person, when he hears the truth, you should accept it. If he hears the truth, if by mistake I say two plus two is five, you say, brother, two plus two is not five, it is four. And you prove it to me, thank you, brother. I say, Jazakallah, may Allah reward you. We have to accept it. But if I say two plus two is equal to four and someone says, no, it is five, then I say that, say two plus two is four, it's not five, it's a mistake, and I'll correct him. So whoever's right, we have to agree. Now coming to your question, a very good argument that in the red letter, JSK has said that whatever comes in your mouth that doesn't defile you, it is what's in your heart. I agree with you for sake of argument. Then it's a contradiction between what I quoted to you. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 to 20. Think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. So that is a mistake. That means Jesus Christ, peace be upon told a lie. No, Allah. May Allah forbid. We don't agree with that. He cannot tell a lie. Even if you break one law or jot or a tittle, the law is you shall not have pork. So whenever there are two statements given, we have to try and follow both together. That means the other thing which you eat, no problem, but don't have pork. Why? Because Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 to 20 says, you cannot break a single law or jot or tittle. Similarly in the Quran, there are various things in the Quran where it says that these foods are haram. But that doesn't mean only those four foods are haram. There's one more food made haram somewhere else. Like one place which I quoted, dead meat, blood, and flesh of swine. Somewhere else it's mentioned, alcohol is haram. That does not mean you cannot read one verse of the Quran and say that is full Islam. Fine? So any way where it's mentioned haram is haram. And then it says everything else is halal. Here when we come to know that one verse of the Bible in red letter says that I have come to keep the commandments, not break a single of them. If any of you break one jot, one tittle, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. So all the other verses cannot contradict this. Otherwise, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is telling a lie in one place, knows billah, which you don't agree. So we cannot be little Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, to upgrade Paul or Peter. No. We cannot. That is a law. So when we realize, we say just because Paul or Peter said something or Thomas said something, you want to go against Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said no. What do we say about Paul and Peter and Thomas said is wrong? We can try and get a reconciliation if we can. If, if, if this wasn't there, Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verse number 17 to 20, if it wasn't there, don't break law or title, maybe, maybe, not for sure, I can give you other arguments again that time is limited. I put my if in the front. Maybe if this was, wasn't, our, yes brother, very good, I agree with you. But because this verse is there, Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 to 20, if you break one law, one jot or tittle, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Then you cannot. Under any circumstances, whether Paul says that, Thomas says that, or Peter says that, or anyone says that. You understand? This is how you understand logically. So what you are doing just to upgrade Paul, you means I'm talking about some of the Christian. When I say, you means Christian. To upgrade one of the apostles, you're believing that Jesus Christ, God forbid, told a lie, which I cannot agree. So this is how you study, how you do comparative study. So based on the comparative study, what we say, that if Christian is a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, then we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. If you don't have pork, I congratulate you. Maybe after you go out of this auditorium, if you're having alcohol, you stop having alcohol. If you're worshipping Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, maybe after you leave this auditorium, you will stop worshipping Jesus Christ, peace be upon him as God. So we pray to Almighty God to give you and me guidance. I'm very happy that before you came in this auditorium, you were not having pork. Maybe after hearing my talk, you may stop having alcohol if you're having. If you're worshipping Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, after you leave this auditorium, you will not worship him. Because I've given you proof. Or you may go 
to your study room or go to a library and check up the references and then find out, yes, what that person, that boy, you know, I saw a lean looking boy wearing a cap and a specs, a small beard, lean person, quoting, quoting, quoting. Fine, what he said is right. From today, I will stop worshiping Jesus Christ. But yet I'll respect him. Yet I'll love him. Yet I'll revere him. I will read my Bible and find out that one more prophet is going to come. His name is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I'll read that book and you and I will come closer to the truth. So we pray to Almighty God to give you and me guidance. Hope that answers the question. Most welcome. Yes, you're most welcome to give uh, both those VCDs. Hope you have a VCD player, brother. The two VCDs dealing with the talks, similarities between Islam and Christianity. So I have easy references. Everyone can't remember. Yes, you're most welcome. Sure, sure. You're most welcome. Wa dawan alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Ya Rabbu innaka anta salam minka salam ilayka salam Ya Rabbu innaka anta salam minka salam ilayka salam li amrika yarji'u amrul anam bayna 